Coach, uh, we've kind of been talking about it all year leading up to this, but <clears throat> last year kind of went into the season not knowing and just kind of hoping to get in, and that was the expectation this year. How different was it sitting here watching it today compared to your first year here? I wasn't as nervous as last year, uh, but when they wait to the last bracket, you start thinking some crazy thoughts because of the historic week the championship week was and all the chatter about um, how difficult it was for the committee to leave some teams that were deserving in most years uh, out of the tournament. So when you start seeing some teams that you thought maybe you were ahead of and you're getting some decent seeds, you know, your mind plays tricks on you, but certainly uh, it made it more gratifying to see your name come up there as an eight seed. Steph, go ahead. Obviously, you guys, you know, we're here today to, to watch together. I guess what was it like kind of seeing the reaction from your players to finally get your name called? That's why I told Sherry we were standing next to each other looking, you know, at the TV above us. And once I figured out, hey, there's TVs over there, let's turn around and then we can watch them um, and see, you know, it come up at the same time. And, um, you know, it was cool. It was, it was fun. You know, that's one of those moments um, that, that you never forget to see their joyful reaction. And, you know, for some of them, a dream to come true since they started playing this game. And, um, you know, that was, it was really nice to see him celebrate and enjoy it. And uh, I'm going to let him do that, you know, the rest of the evening. Justin, the coach is right. Chris, you were obviously very careful with your wording during the week in Nashville, just after games and stuff. Was there ever a point either after the LSU win or the Tennessee win where you, where you truly felt comfortable that you guys were going to make the field today? Obviously, you know, with each win, you, you feel a little bit better about it. And then certainly with um, Tennessee's resume and, you know, where they stand, um, in terms of their metrics and that, et cetera. You know, you felt like, man, you know, we should be in there by now. But um, that wasn't our mindset at all, you know, down in Nashville. You know, we expected to, to be playing this afternoon with a chance to, to cut down some nets like Auburn did. And um, certainly we're disappointed and still are um, with those results. Now, obviously, we'll turn the page and get ready for the NCAA tournament. But, um, you know, you just never know. I try not to dig too deep. Um, in, in what everyone's saying and let it play out. Sean, go ahead. Uh, Chris, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you can't even remotely think about how things are going to go, but, you know, from your own personal end with how you all kind of ended the season and went into the SEC tournament, where do you kind of feel that your team is kind of at heading into, you know, March Madness? I think we're playing better. I thought, you know, 120 minutes in three consecutive days, you know, with noon starts every game. Them are tough turnarounds, and they were locked in, and I thought they played uh, better defensively than we had um, some of the previous games down the stretch of the regular season schedule. We certainly had some, you know, some down moments there. We had some stretches where we'd like back, and which is you know, pretty typical for most um, games. But, um, you know, I think they've seen, you know, and got back to, like I talked about down in Nashville, of, how we need to play to be successful. You know, we shared some information with them um, to get them to understand um, when we were playing our best, you know, why was that? And it went back to, you know, our core principles of our program. And, you know, I, I think they rallied around that and it really helped us uh, win a couple games down there. Robbie, Steph. Digging into the big picture a little more, just thinking back at the resume that y'all built and more importantly, the SEC schedule that y'all played this year and how tough it was, just how prepared do you feel like that schedule Thank you all for this tournament. And we'll find out here soon enough. Um, and we got a ton of respect for, for the Big Ten and the Michigan State Spartans and Tom Mizzo and all that. Uh, and they play in a you know equally tough um, basketball conference. So I'm sure they're more than battle tested themselves. But um, you know even playing in Nashville, you know with the platform and the lights and the stage, it, it feels like the NC tournament. You know, I've been in, fortunately, a bunch of NCAA tournament games at different um, you know, positions on the bench. And um, it's different when you're new at it. And the SEC tournament, it's, it just feels just like it, other than the courts aren't of the NCAA March Madness brand. So I think having played three games down there should um, make everyone feel more comfortable and not have the lights quite as bright. And hopefully that experience um, will help us uh, going into this weekend. Obviously, you're gonna, you know, scout Michigan State as you guys get ready here. But you know, for you guys defensively, 
the, the way you played against LSU and Tennessee especially, does that give you confidence that if you guys can, can do that defensively, it doesn't matter, you know, who the matchup is against? Yeah, we got a confident group. You know, I think our confidence is as high as it's been um, for the all season long. I, mean, I don't ask them all the time, but just from reading body language, um, just the vibe that we got going on uh, in our practices right now. Every coach in America wants their team to be playing their absolute best, you know, coming down the stretch, and we're no different. And um, I, I think we're in a really good spot. And I, I want to make sure and get this out there because um, I won't be asked about it. But um, I think a couple individuals need to be recognized. And we'll, we'll have forgotten about that. But in my opinion, the reason that you know, we're getting the seed and, and maybe even in the tournament um, goes back to Jimmy Bell and Guy Chole. I mean, I don't know what, where we'd be if, if Guy Chole uh, didn't play at the level that he played. Now, it wasn't 25, 30 minutes a night, but he was invaluable for us in, in some of those games and, and when Tolu wasn't available. And then Jimmy, uh, with the work that he put in as a starter before Tolu's return, I'm not sure if we're going to be, be able to handle um, you know some of those teams like we did and I just think that those two guys are kind of the unsung heroes um, For our complete body of work this season. Why do you think that I mean this this team making it to back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments for the first time I think in 15 years, you know, obviously a testament to the great job that you've been doing in Starkville How do you think you've been able to kind of have so much success early on with this program you think so far? You know, I said it when I got here that um, Coach Holland and his staff did a tremendous job of having good players and, and equally important having good kids in the program and, and I meant what I said and fortunately they gave us uh, some time to get to know them and then in, in the end you know for the most part the ones that we wanted to come back you know chose to come back and it was some blind faith on, on their part and you know, we sold them a vision of what we thought we could do and part of it was you know we didn't have a three four year plan you know if you remember back to you know the first day I was introduced here that's what I talked about you know, we're not trying to build a program. We're trying to build a team each and every year to make the NCAA tournament and, and go on runs. And I meant what I said. And, and fortunately, the, the, the majority of the kids, you know, I guess, thought that was, you know, what was going to happen. And um, so it goes back to that. You know, we started with a core group that believed we certainly have added pieces over time. And then this year, heading into the season uh, with all the returnees and with the guys that we added, we thought you would have a chance to, to be even better. And uh, with that, you know, uh, behind closed doors, we, we raised the bar a little bit for uh, the end of the season goals that we have. And, um, you know, we're not there yet, but we're in position now um, to have a chance to do that. A few more, Justin, than Grace. Go, going off of that, I'm not sure if you know, but you're the first coach in program history to go to the NCAA tournament in both of their first two years. Just just your thoughts on, on that accomplishment. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, someday it'll probably be a little more meaningful to, uh, to me right now. But, um, you know, right now we'll, we'll get through this and get ready to, to open up the laptop and, and watch the Spartans. Grace. I know last year you talked about having a team mostly of guys that haven't experienced this going into Dayton. How did that experience of you know playing in the first four, getting to the tournament last year, help those guys that are coming back this year going into this? Hopefully it'll help them a lot. You know, I, we'll see how it unfolds uh, once we get into that mode. And listen, I, I just wanted to see our name, and I'm not going to lie to you. Like if I had my brothers, we weren't going to have to go back to Dayton, but. There was a possibility that in my eyes, because of you know the championship week and what went on uh, on the bubble, um, but but I think that you know we'll have more time you know to prepare. We won't have to get on a plane tomorrow. Um, we'll get back into practice mode and we'll be able to digest Michigan State like a normal prep week for an NCAA tournament. And hopefully that will help everybody you know kind of get settled in before the ball is tipped. Jason, wrap us up. Coach, you guys had a very emotional game yesterday against Auburn. How do you get those guys, your team, to you know channel that energy and get ready to make a run starting on Thursday? Yeah, fortunately, what I've learned over time is uh, kids are resilient. They're already over that. They're, they've moved on. They're they're ready for the next chapter. Um, I've got to make sure that I'm over with uh, the feelings and the emotions and the disappointment of of not playing and having a chance to win a championship today because that. You know, was, was the goal, and we felt it was realistic, and unfortunately it didn't happen. But um, these kids will be fine. We'll hit the practice court tomorrow, and they'll be ready to go. Cam, you know, you guys were a group last year that kind of got the first first taste for a lot of players about going to March Madness. What do you kind of remember from that experience that you know think could, you think could help you guys out this week? Uh, I just I just remember being excited. Uh, been a long time. 
uh, just being in the tournament, but just having a feeling that uh, there's more on the table for us. And I think that's what we came into this year thinking that we was going to get better and improve from last year. Rob, I had to ask uh, Coach James about your schedule. It's a tough schedule that you play. You know, it's kind of prepared you for this. And we saw it prepared you in the NCAA tournament. What's your thoughts on just how prepared you all are going into the NCAA tournament after playing that gauntlet? I feel like the SEC uh, helped us a lot, uh, top to bottom, really good teams. And during the tournament, uh, I feel like we played very well, neutral court. Uh, we're going to have fans that's going to come out, but I feel like we're just going to have our own fuel during the game. How, how different was uh, this year's expectations? Last year, I uh, talked to Coach Jans about it, just hoping to get in the tournament, find a way. But this year, that was pretty much the expectation coming into the year. How oh, yeah. different was that mindset? Uh, last year, we didn't really know what to expect, but we knew we were going to win games. And this year, I feel like we were just uh, just working on ourselves because uh, we knew we were going to be a really good team and just capitalize on opportunities and get a good seed in the tournament. Go to the middle, Benjamin, then John. You guys had to be resilient a number of times this season, whether it was the Southern loss, the first half of conference play, or the way the regular season ended. What gives you guys confidence that you'll be, you'll be able to bounce back from pretty much anything that's thrown your way at this point going to the, in the March Madness? Uh, just the way we practice, uh, how do we have the, how, the way we get after it every day in practice. Uh, I got the most faith in all my teammates and my coaches, and uh, I know we're going to go out and compete no matter what. You guys, I mean, under Chris Jans, I think it's back-to-back -back tournament appearances for the first time in, in over a decade. What do you see from him behind the scenes that makes him such kind of a successful coach for this program? Uh, how how in depth he gets with the game. Uh, he, he loves the game, uh, the way he preps for every game, how he gets his team ready, and we, I just appreciate for him uh, him for doing that. To your right with Justin and Grace. Cam, two years ago, obviously you and, and a bunch of other you know guys on the team had to make a choice when you and Coach Jans out here about whether to stay or go. What about that vision he sold? You guys, you know, made you believe you can get to this point where you're making the tournament, you know, back to back years and, and getting an eight seed and being able to compete like you have this year? Uh, just the swear he came in with, uh, how he preached, uh, his play style, that's what kind of sold me. And then once I found out uh, Toto was coming back, that's, that also kind of uh, played a part in me coming back as well. Paul and Steph, to your left. You, uh, Coach Jans talked about it and getting back the way that, that y'all have to be successful. Was there a moment? In the SEC tournament, whether the first game, second game, third game, where where you saw that defense start to click again, and how y'all been playing? Uh, yeah, just uh, really that that second half of the LSU game. Uh, I feel like we kind of start hitting the the right steps, going in the right direction. I just feel like we kind of just took off from there. For you guys, you know, that decided to, to come back and play for Coach Chance, like you and Tolu, I guess. You talked a lot about wanting to, you know, maintain the foundation of this program. What does it mean now to be part of, you know, this veteran core that's gotten back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances? Uh, it means a lot. Uh, putting a lot of pressure on me and Tolu, but we're, we're, we're big boys. We can handle it. Uh, just looking out for the younger guys and the guys that's coming after us, just trying to lay down the foundation for them. A few more, Grace. Jans just said that he wasn't as nervous watching the show as last year, but when they leave you all to the last bracket, your mind kind of starts to go places. I guess, where were your nerves at watching the show? And then when you finally see your name up there, what does it feel like? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I had a feeling that we were going to be in, but just the after the first and the second, it's just like, OK, we need to go ahead and say our name. But uh, when they said our name, uh, it was a big relief, you know, just seeing our name in there, not, not a play-in team, just really in there and just ready to get after it. How long did those commercial breaks feel? Too long, too long, too long. I really am I'm not a fan of commercials, really. <laughs> Steph and Paul to wrap us up. Yeah, we've seen some young guys obviously step up for this team and kind of, you know, show bright future for this program as well. I guess what excites you about your Mississippi State beyond this season? And, and have you made any decision about, you know, your next season? Uh, I haven't made a decision yet, but uh, just, I just know the, the guys after us, they're they going to stay after it, uh, especially with a guy like Jans. He's he not going to leave you much room to not get after it. You, uh, Pretty much everybody on this team was back experiencing NCAA tournament. You brought in Jimmy, he's been in the NCAA tournament. How much can y'all share your experiences with somebody like Hubbard? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna make new memories and we're gonna win games in March. Cam was just talking about, you know, those commercial breaks and you got an eight seed but you had to wait until the last part of the bracket. How, how long did that feel down there? Felt uh <laughs> felt a little long, but you know, we trusted our work. We know what we had to do and we uh through God's grace we was in there, so not working. Paul, go ahead. You uh, asked the same question to Cam last year. You guys were just hoping to get the tournament when the season started, trying to get back there. Different expectation this year. How different is that mindset going into to this year's tournament? 
Well, first it was a great feeling that we got in. Um, we put a lot of work into this and uh, getting our whole core back. Um, they had us believing in each other and, and believing in our capabilities and all the work that we put in and coaching staff. And so it, uh, it's just a great feeling to see that our work paid off. Justin, to your right. Toto, I asked the same question to Cam. Um, I mean, obviously you guys as, as seniors had to make decisions with Coach Chance got here, whether to stay or go. Mm -hmm. What made you believe at that time that he could get you guys to this <coughs> point where you're making a tournament, you know, back-to-back -back years, something that hasn't been done yet? I mean, Coach Jan's resume speaks for itself. Like, he's a winner everywhere he's been. Uh, he's going to go down as one of the best coaches ever to do this sport. So um, it, was, it wasn't a hard decision to come back to Mississippi State, knowing that I'm a Mississippi State guy and being able to play for a coach like that and a coaching staff like that. It was easy to adjust, and they're, they're just great family-oriented people. So. Steph, to your left, and then we'll go to John. Obviously, you know a lot of the success this program has had is you know a testament to what you've been able to do. But your coach was talking about that stretch where, where you were out and what Jimmy and, and Guy were able to do, kind yeah. of stepping in. Yeah. Well, what, what's it mean to kind of have those two guys there and, and help this team when, when you weren't able to? They still help this team. They still help this team. I mean, Guy might not be playing a lot, but he's he's vocal for a freshman. And he got a lot of potential coming up. Jimmy's one of my one of my favorite uh, teammates. And I'm not trying to say like I have a favorite, but like, he's just a guy that I, I really um, mesh well with. And he's always motivated me and always pushed me, and we always push each other. And, and that's a, a great brother to be around. So I, I just say, like, uh, having them on the team is a blessing. And, and they steady help us. It's not like because they haven't helped us, they just still help us to this day. So. Jimmy talked when he you know came here about being able to take any role that, that came his way. I guess, well, what's yeah. it mean when you have someone coming in from the portal who yeah. you know, is a new guy to the team be able to embrace whatever's thrown his way? Yeah, Jimmy Bear is a superstar, man. Like, uh, on and off the court, a uh, high spirited guy. Um, just love love the team. He has a high passion for this sport, and I um, uh, love that guy. I appreciate everything he's done for us. I, I ask him to continue to help us. You were talking about Chris Jans being a winner everywhere he's been. I mean, but you get to see it behind the scenes every day. You've been with him for a couple of years now. What do you think is it about him that makes him so successful as a coach? Man, it's so much. It's so much that goes into so much that goes into uh, his abilities and and the coaching staff's abilities that, that even the players don't see, you know? There's some things that they, they work long nights, early mornings, and they're always in the office, always talking of, of, of ways to get better and stuff like that. So, And a lot of people don't see the, the hard work they put in. Like, for the SEC tournament, they was working day in and day out. Like, I, I'll be asleep, they'll still be in the office. I'd be like, it's just crazy the amount of hours they put in. So it's stuff like that. I mean, I think that's the distinguishing factor between a good coach and a great coach. And, Coach James is a great coach. Benjamin, to your left. Yeah, last year you, got a, you guys get a little taste of this uh, of the tournament. You make the decision uh, to come back here for your final year of eligibility. Yeah. You get uh, another chance here. Are you, are you happy with that decision at this point? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to go back to Dayton for nothing. So <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, I think it's a big opportunity for Mississippi State. I, I think it's a big opportunity for Mississippi in general. So. Even with Jimmy Jimmy coming on from the portal, he's got his NCAA tournament experience. Mm -hmm. I guess everybody in the rotation pretty much does, yeah. except for Hubbard. How how confident are you? Obviously, he, he hasn't been shy of the moment this year, regardless of the stage. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of guys been to been to that stage. Um, you know, I really just scratched the surface of the tournament. I think Jimmy's a, a guy that's really been in there. So, um, like I said, we, we trust our work. We're a really confident team right now. Going into March, and that's how you want your team to be, very confident. So. A few more, we'll do Steph, Robbie, and then Grace. DJ was talking to us yesterday about, you know, he felt like he kind of lost his composure a bit when he got that technical. Yeah. But what's it mean about this team, I guess, that a guy like, you know, a veteran guy like that is willing to kind of step up and, and pin it on himself? And you have a ton of veterans who are like that as well. How much does that guy help the team? <clears throat> Bless you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> DJ, man, DJ puts a lot of work in. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's one of the heart and souls of, of this team. And um, a lot of veteran guys like me, Mook, and DJ, and Shaq, we're, we're hard critiques on ourselves because we know uh, we're not representing just us. We represent Mississippi State, we represent Starkville. So it's, it's a lot weighing on us, but it's okay. We're big boys, we can handle that. So uh, for DJ to say that, it means a lot for him and it means a lot for this program. So. Tell us, this team has been really good at neutral site games. Yeah. And a lot of them happen with you on the bench. Yeah. What, what, did, what did you see from that group just to kind of Keep y'all's head above water during that time of non-conference, and how big was that stretch to get y'all to where y'all are? Man, we, we wouldn't be here without those games, you know? We wouldn't be here without the Jimmy Bells or, or the God Chos, like Coach Jan said. So um, I think what got us through those stretches is just staying together. We put a lot of work in, a lot of work in over the summer and uh, preseason and all that. So I think um, 
just knowing that we put that work in, knowing that, that we know we're capable of and the confidence that we have, it's going to pay off dividends for, for the next game. So. Grace, to your right to wrap it up. Going into this tournament, what is it about this team that would make you guys someone that another team wouldn't want to face in March? As for us? Yeah. Like, like what, what about this team would someone see you and not want to play you guys? Uh, defense. That's what we, that's what we uh, live on. That's what we put our hat on. We put our hat on defense. Um, we thrive off of that. That's how we play good. Every time we have a good game, it's because of defense. So, uh, I think any team will have a, uh, a hard time dealing with that. So.